There is almost no options in the Micro ATX PC Builders market. The Cooler Master MB311L has been my go-to Micro ATX case for about the past two years, and rightfully so. It's a good price, has great airflow, and it's easy to build it. A new contender has just caught my attention, and I just had to try it out. Let's see how they do. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny. Welcome to Danny's Tech Channel. Allow me to introduce you to the Fractal Design Pop Air Mini. This is a new case from Fractal Design and I just had to try it out because this is really one of the only micro ATX cases on the market from a reputable brand. The Pop series of cases gives you lots of different options when choosing a case. You can choose either the Pop Air model or the Pop Silent model. The Air comes with a mesh front panel and the silent is exactly how it sounds. It's got a solid front and top panel along with some sound dampening materials. Each model comes in three different variants. You've got the standard ATX model, which starts at $79.99 USD, and the RGB version of that case comes in at $89.99 USD, so just 10 bucks more. Well, one of the neat things is the mini version, which I got here, is the exact same price. So if you don't want the mini, you can pay for the full size and not pay a penny more. So $79.99 for the standard model, whether it be the mini or the full size, and for the RGB version, it's $89.99. This is USD prices, by the way. The third model that they offer is the XL version. This supports eATX motherboards, and it gives you four fans instead of three, like the other two options. They come in at $99.99 and $109.99 for the RGB version. Oh, also, they're gonna be coming out with a nano version soon that uses mini ITX motherboards. It's a little bit smaller than this case, but it's not on the website, so I can't really tell you much about it. The standard versions also give you options for color accents, such as blue, orange, green, and pink with the black version of the case. This allows you to personalize it a little bit more to your liking. Fractal has provided so many choices for this case, it's almost overwhelming. Let me take you for a walk around the Pop Mini that I have here. I'm gonna start on the view window side. There is a tempered glass panel which is held on by two captive thumb screws on the back. Once you loosen the screws, you'll need to push the glass toward the rear and hinge it outward to remove it. It supports micro ATX and ITX motherboards. The larger versions support ATX or even EATX as I said earlier. It has a cable pass through channel along the top and the side with two small cutouts along the bottom. The power supply cover has nice triangle pattern cutouts for airflow which you'll see mirrored all over the case. CPU air cooler max height is 170 millimeters. Radiators can be mounted in the front or on the top of up to 240 millimeters. Your max GPU length is 365 millimeters. As you can see, I put the biggest card that I have in here, which is the ASUS RG Strix, and it fits with room to spare. It has this weird magnetic panel on the front at the bottom with a small tray behind it. I don't really see the point, but whatever. Behind the tray is two 5.25 inch drive mounts for stuff like disk drives in 2022. The front panel pops off if you're wondering. It is tight and it looks like it's fixed. Just follow the instructions and you'll get it off easily. You'll want to remove the magnetic tray, glass panel, and cable management side panels to get your fingers around the front panel for grip. Behind this cover is two Aspect 12 RGB fans. You can fit two 120 mil fans or two 140 millimeter fans as well. Now the plastic blocks the 140 millimeter fan flow, so I would honestly just stick with the 120 mil fans that came with the case. Plus, they're actually really good quality, so you're paying for them, you might as well use them. If you're gonna be using a radiator mounted in the front of the case, I would honestly put the fans on the outside section and the radiator towards the inside. That way you allow yourself the most clearance for your GPU if using a front mounted radiator. There's also two pass-throughs for cables on the front as well, hidden behind the mesh. On the cable management side, there's lots of cable pass-throughs with beveled edges to prevent chafing. There's plenty of tie-down points for cable management as well, and it's got a full motherboard access opening to allow you upgrades in the future. There's two 3.5 inch removable hard drive trays and a removable 2.5 inch tray with two mounting locations. On the bottom, there's a removable dust filter that's made out of nylon and four rubber feet. On the top, there's a magnetic dust filter covering more triangle pattern openings just like on the power supply shroud. For fan support, you can fit two 120 mil fans or a single 140 millimeter fan. The IO is also mounted on the top. You have one USB-C slot, but it's not included. You've got to buy it extra. You have two USB 3.0 Type-A ports, 
a separate microphone and headphone jack, and a multifunction RGB button, as well as the power button. Are you wondering how to hook up the RGB to the case so that you can use that RGB button on the top to be able to control your lighting and everything like that? Because not all motherboards have an RGB connector. Well, let me see if I can make it as simple as possible. First, you remove that red cover right there. Then each fan has a male and female RGB connector to it. You'll daisy chain them together. The front female connector will go onto the male connector, which is under the red cap. Then the male connector from that end goes into the female of the next front fan connector. Then lastly, you'll connect the female from the rear fan into the male of the second fan. For the rear fan of the case, you'll keep the male end with the rubber cap on it. That'll be unused. Just tuck that away inside the case. It's pretty simple if you take a look at it, just follow the instructions as I said. Their instructions are really well put together and they're very easy to read. Last, let's take a look at the rear. It's got a 120 millimeter fan mount only at the rear with an included Aspect 12 RGB fan. The triangle pattern continues onto the rear with four PCI slot covers that are removable by a thumb screw. The power supply mount isn't removable like on some other fractal cases, such as the Meshify 2 Compact. Your max length for the power supply is 150 millimeters. Are you getting value from this video? If so, consider subscribing down below and come back for more tech related content. Now let's take a look at how easy this build was to put together in this quick video montage. As you saw, I finished the build, I took some build notes on this thing, and now I'm gonna let you know, this is just from a regular consumer's perspective, how this thing is to build in. Fractal didn't send me this case, this is all my opinion on this thing. First, I'm gonna start with the positives, because there is a lot on this case, I'm actually very impressed. First thing I wanna mention is they have a fantastic user guide. If you're new to building computers, if you've never done it before, anyone can do it. It's color-coded, it's easy to follow, and it's got great illustrations. Second thing I really enjoyed is the easy to use RGB control. It was easy to hook up once I figured out how to daisy chain everything together and it plugs into all the fans right into the case. You don't even need the motherboard support whatsoever. So if your motherboard doesn't support RGB, this thing can do it with no problem. Once again, all you have to do is follow the instructions. It's one button with two functions depending on if you press it or press it and hold it for two seconds. Another cool thing I noticed after I powered it on the power button is RGB too. I don't know if you can tell in the B-roll there, but it is an RGB power switch. So I thought that was kind of a nice touch. When I was doing the build, when I first started planning this out, I thought those two bottom holes were gonna be complicated as far as routing the cables, because usually it's like a solid channel at the bottom, and I'm sure they probably did it to hide cables or for extra support, but I didn't have any issues with the cable pass-throughs. They are beveled, so they're not damaging your cables at all. The cables were easy to route through and they fit exactly where I wanted them to be every time with minimal cable management required. Speaking of cable management, there is lots of cable management space. You have two different depths of cable management. Behind the motherboard section, which is your majority of your space, you have about two centimeters. And in the front section here, there's like a beveled edge where it kind of pops out. You have three centimeters of space behind that section. There's only two cable management straps, like the Velcro straps, but I honestly didn't expect a whole lot in the budget range that this case comes in, plus it's small size. This is just a little side note. I guess I'm being kind of picky with this, but I love that Fractal uses smooth screw heads when it comes to the power supply mounting. 
Some companies use textured heads for more grip. This chews up the case and I myself reuse these things. I'll do multiple builds in the same case or I'll tear it apart and get rid of it and give it to somebody else or something. I don't want the case to be all messed up by these textured screws where they dig into the case. So the fact that Fractal's using smooth screw heads is very impressive to me. Another great thing is you have full access to the back of the motherboard if you decide you wanna do some upgrades later like liquid cooling. They also include these special brackets for installing an AIO up top to allow clearance for taller RAM or VRM heat sinks. Obviously that's something I didn't get to test because I'm using an air cooler on this system. So if that's something that you might be interested in watching, a liquid cooled upgrade in this case, let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll make it happen. That reminds me, quick story, I wanted to do liquid cooling on this computer because the CPU that I decided to use in this is the i5-12600K from Intel. As everybody knows, Intel's 12th gen is pretty hot. The 12600K is really no exception. It does get a little toasty. It's not overwhelming, but it's not cool by any means. I was gonna use liquid cooling in this also to test out the way the liquid cooler mounts in the case. However, I don't have a LGA 1700 bracket for my liquid cooler that I have to do builds with. I have the EK AIO, the 240 version. Speaking of fails, let's talk about some of the negatives of this case. The one thing that I didn't like is installing the power supply requires the removal of both 3.5 inch sleds and the 2.5 inch SSD tray. Now I used a big 1000 watt power supply, but Fractal said it could fit, so I had to know if it did, and it does. You just have to remove a couple brackets, which the instructions don't tell you. Another small issue of this thing is the front cover of this pops off very easily. It's just two magnets that hold it on. I wonder if that's why they called it the pop because it pops off easily. It's not a big deal if you don't move the case around a lot, but if you do like I do, then every time you go to pick it up, you might knock that panel off. The last thing is the bottom dust filter removes from the back. You actually pull that out from the back of the case with the little handle here. Like I said, not a big deal, but just a thing to think about. I wanna talk about temperatures real quick because temperatures on an airflow focused case are always important. But honestly, this case performed fine for me. I monitored the temperatures while I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Warzone, with the side panel on, obviously. The CPU hit a max temperature of 66 degrees Celsius, and the GPU hit a max temperature of 67 degrees Celsius. I did shove some power-hungry components into here. As I said, I put the i5-12600K, and this is an RTX 3070 ASUS ROG Strix card. So they're not low power by any means. If you wanna see the full build list, I'll link it below and you can take a look. I'm honestly really happy with how this build turned out and all the Pop Series cases are pretty much the same design. They're easy to build in, there's lots of options when choosing your case and you can choose airflow or silent as well. The few small gripes that I had really aren't a deal breaker to me. Honestly, the only thing that I would say to correct is if they could lower the price just a little bit, maybe 10 or 20 bucks, it'd be perfect. Remember I said at the beginning, the Cooler Master MB311L has been my go-to case for so long. And it's because the price was so good versus all the things they gave you like airflow, ease of use, that kind of thing, quality of workmanship. But let me tell you, the quality of the Fractal case is by far better than the Cooler Master case. You can just feel the difference in the case. And I'm honestly torn now because the MB311L's price has gone up. I can't find the Cooler Master case for less than $89.99 USD. The Pop is the same price with better quality. I think I found my new go-to when it comes to micro ATX cases. And maybe you did too. I do want to try an AIO system install into this case and see how the bracket system works. Maybe it can keep my 12600K in check during heavy Cinebench testing. So what's your opinion of the Fractal Design Pop series of cases? Let me know what you think of these things below. Thanks for stopping by for my Fractal Design Pop Mini review. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one.